In today's episode, as we work through September, we're going to take a deep dive into our roster so we can get prepared for the offseason. Playoffs are out of our reach. So it's time for me as the GM to start analyzing the team and figuring out exactly the moves we want to prepare for when free agency begins. Welcome back to the Pittsburgh Pirates rebuild on MLB The Show 24. I'm Soxway Up. Today we focus on September call-ups and finishing the first season. The Pirates started out hot, slowed down dramatically. We made a lot of trades, a lot of moves, but let's get right in to the September call-ups. First, we're gonna go look at our injured list. We have Triolo. He's been on the 60 day longer than 60 days. He'll be back in about one to six days. We can go ahead and activate him now. He won't be able to play, but we know he's gonna be one of our call-ups anyways the second he's healthy, so we went ahead and activated him. So once he is back in one to six days, we will insert him back in the lineup. So the other position that we're gonna look at, the first one we're gonna take a look at is Brent Honeywell. Brent doesn't really have a huge future with the team at this point. He is a free agent after this season. It might be worth calling him up to see if he has some stuff to re-sign. Is he worth it? With the D potential, 29 years old already. He's had a little bit of major league experience. 43 games total with a 5.08 ERA. I'm just not leaning towards that. We also have players like Kobe Mayo, who is definitely ready for a call-up. He's regressing in a couple areas. Discipline, power from the left side. Not too worried about that. Two home runs, 10 RBIs so far since we've added him to our AAA squad with two, a 226 batting average. I think we were gonna hold off on him until next year. A player that's been up and down all season is Nick Gonzalez. We're gonna move him back to the Major League roster, give him a shot to end the season with some at-bats. He's gonna be in the running for our starting second baseman next year. Along all three of these guys are gonna be battling it out next year in spring training. So I wanted to get Gonzalez up. I didn't want to get Johnson up yet. We're going to bring him to spring training next season and see how he does. And you can see the AAA rot lineups were not affected by that since we had Johnson batting in both lineups anyways. So we will leave them with just four bench players right now. They do have a decent amount of pitching. I did fix that off camera. They are tied for first place right now with the Storm Chasers. And then the Curve have dropped to two games behind the Seawolves. So I don't think... It's going to be tough if we'll have any postseason baseball with our double-A team. Triple-A team, we're still hoping so. One thing you might have noticed on the injured list that we didn't go over in any, any episode, and Marco Gonzalez has a head fracture. This was done during a game where a simming accidentally wasn't recording during that time. He's out plus six months, and he has he's under contract next year. So he will be one of the guys, once he comes back, that will eventually be fighting for one of our starting positions in the starting rotation as we take a look at our pitching rotation in the major leagues now we have mitch keller who's going to be our number one going into next year most likely avedo will be the number two and Skeens will be the number three they might fight it out for who's the number two pitcher but then we have jared jones who has really really struggled to start his career in the big leagues he's oh and six 32 innings pitch 8.44 era whip still at two He's still progressing, but if we come and look at it, home runs looks like they have been an issue. We slide all the way over here, 2.53 home runs per nine, 4.5 walks per nine, seven strikeouts per nine, a negative war so far, two hit batters, just struggling. I don't think we're worried at this point. I did mention he only has three pitches. That could become somewhat of a concern, but I think he, we're going to give him some time, and, then, and we'll see how he does in spring training next year and the rest of this season. Anthony Salamedo is one that we did bring up when Gonzalez got hurt. So far, he's pitched one game, 5.2 innings, six hits, four runs, three home runs in that one outing. One player that I'm somewhat getting excited about is Quinn Priester. He's a 68 overall B potential, 23 years of age. In AAA this year, a 4.40 ERA. Doesn't give us the advanced stats, unfortunately, for AAA, but he's given up 14 earned runs, three home runs, not too bad. Only in five starts, though. Three home runs is, is kind of high. The two catchers we have on our roster for the foreseeable future are Davis and Hernandez. Davis is pr improving pretty much everywhere a lot, except for power against left and contact against right. 
but he's batting 248 this year. He's hit nine home runs, 45 RBIs. Slugging's at 382. We'd like to see that a little bit higher. Defensively, he's had, he's had eight, eight, eight errors and 70 assists. War of 0.8 could be a little bit better, but we're liking what we're seeing from him so far as he's developing. He's only 24. And then we have Andy Rodriguez, who's 23 years old. He's a B potential as well. So these two are going to be competing with each other for a while. And the benefit that Andy gives us that Davis doesn't is flexibility at positions. So having a backup catcher that can play first base, second base, left field, and center field is going to be huge to us. He's played 49 games so far this year, and he's batting 259, improving across the board, but not as quickly as Davis is improving. Even though he's a third baseman, the first baseman we want to look at first is Kobe Mayo. He's improving everywhere except for power and discipline, stealing and base aggressiveness. That's not to be concerned about. The thing we are concerned about is he's only batting 203 in AAA after 31 games. He's got two home runs, 11 RBIs, struck out 27 times. He struck out more times than he has hits. His war is negative as well, just 0.3. Grounded into three double plays, on base percentage, plus slugging 574. All of these numbers really need to see improve. 128 bats, not a huge sample size. As long as his attributes are still improving, I'm not too worried about Mayo. Bryce Eldridge is improving pretty much everywhere except for power against lefties. He's up to a 62 overall. A lot of improvement on his defense as well. He's batting 268 for the year with 75 games played, six home runs, 43 RBIs. He struck out 63 times, so a lot of high strikeouts on the team. 995 fielding percentage, a war of 1.1, only three errors so far for him. On base plus slugging, 723, that's pretty good. We do dig that. Could see a little bit more walks and a little bit more patience from him, but I don't think we'll see him in the bigs next year, but he's definitely a huge part of our future. The big part of the future at second base is Traymar Johnson. He's improving across the board except for power against righties, a plus six on power against lefties. And he, that's a left-handed versus left-handed matchup there. 133 games played. He's batting 252, nine home runs, 56 RBIs, 66 walks, 113 strikeouts, though. A lot of strikeouts here. Slugging percentage, 366. Like to see that improve as well. And six errors, pretty good on the at the field. A 3.2 wins above replacement. Now, we've documented a good amount about Nick Gonzalez. We don't have a lot of highlights, but we talked about him a little bit. He's improving as well, 24-year-old B potential, as well as Bay, who is a 24-year-old with B potential. This team's young. A lot of young players now that we've moved the older ones. Seen a lot of potential to improve. But after starting the month with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6-game losing streak, which was a 7-game total continuing into August... End up running against up against Washington. And let's look at the box scores here. Six to nothing against the Cubs. Another just bad outing. Skeens gives up three earned runs in five innings on six hits. But the offense couldn't do anything. We have Rodriguez with two hits there. McCutcheon with one. Hayes with one. Taylor with one. Just not a lot coming from these bats. The first game of the series against the Nats, we lost two to three. That one saw Jared Jones have one of his best outings so far. Six innings, five hits, two runs. ERA starting to drop, but not much help from the offense again. Then it was four to seven against the Nats. And then the next day, we had Mitch Keller on the mound with seven innings pitched. Two earned runs on five hits, five strikeouts. Just no help from the bats. And then we saw... Holderman come in and get the loss here. He had, he had one third inning, five runs given up. Three of them were earned, two base on balls. Holderman came in and lost the game here for Keller after Chapman had a hold. So it looks like, yeah, we gave up five runs in the ninth inning. Three were earned because of the two base on balls. Holderman can only get one out. Ouch. Then we finally changed our losing ways into a win against the Nats. Avedo gets his 10th win of the season with giving up no runs in eight innings, five hits. Great outing. Holderman gets his first save. Not a lot on the bases, though. We only had five hits in this game. Oliveris had two RBIs. Nick Gonzalez had an RBI there. Both of them hit home runs in that game. Then we lose the series. We lose three out of four to Washington. 
a team that we handled pretty easily at the beginning of the season. Solometo goes five innings, nine hits, one earned run. Not too bad, but just no run support from this struggling offense. The bats break open against the Marlins, who end up being 76 and 68 at this point. Look down here. That was a game by Skeens. He gave up three runs in four innings, so he didn't get the win. Falter got his 10th win of the season. But we see Triolo breaking out on his return. Five for five with two runs scored and two RBIs. He's got his average up to 303. Starting to see the Triolo that we wanted to see and expected to looking at triple a now they've run off four straight wins and then they dropped two here recently bringing them to even with the redbirds in the standings the curves start off the month with four losses but then have won three in a row to keep them in the running they are three and a half games out i don't think that's going to work out for them then there's key brian hayes there's no need to really go over this he's we're not replacing him he's going to be here for the rest of his career hopefully or until he really declines he's still improving across the board having a pretty good year 16 home runs 63 rbis but the fielding is just you can't replace this type of infielder on his way to his second golden glove 8.8 .8 million a year it's a great deal it's a great contract to have he's 27 years old he will be somewhat old when this contract's up, but Brian Hayes is here to stay. And another player here that is technically a third baseman, but we're going to play him at second base is Triolo, and he is starting to pick it up since he's come back from his injury. We can see he's batting 287 now. He's got two home runs, nine RBIs, and only 33 games. Hoping he can stay healthy next year. He's the rally monkey. We want him when up to bat when we're behind. Hoping he stays healthy and can see a full season next year if Johnson is not ready. O'Neill Cruz is another one we're not really concerned with. You can see six plus on the contact against lefties. Power's not going up. I was more concerned about that contact increasing. He's batting 275. He will be our everyday shortstop for the foreseeable future. He might be one that we want to focus on getting a long-term deal on and before he gets too good. We got Pogrero as well. He's a young player. Could be a good long-term backup for Cruz as well as flexibility of him playing third base and second base for us. And Mitch Jeb, we took a look at Mitch Jeb a little bit. He's another one. He's 21 years old. His potential is only C, but he's pretty good in the field. And so I would like to see him as our long-term backup if Pagrero doesn't work out. Between those two players, we have a pretty good future in the middle infield. So we lost 14 to 4 against Miami. Who gave up all of these runs? It was another Jared Jones start. He gave up four runs three earned in five innings and then our bullpen just sucks the next game we lost six to nothing couldn't get any offense going two hits from reynolds and two hits from davis is all we could get across the board keller gives up four earned runs in four and one third innings we got a day off and then we have a win against the royals where we win five to one cruz has two hits Langford has two hits, including a home run. Henry Davis hits a home run as well. Avedo gets his 11th win of the year in eight and one third innings, five hits, one earned run, and three walks. Pretty good outing there. And jumping back to AAA here, we've gone on a little bit of a winning streak where we've won our last two games, putting us at a tie for first place still. And the curve, they just keep falling down. They have two games left in their season, they have been eliminated. As far as the Indians are concerned, they have a full week. We have seven games left for them to figure out if they're going to make the playoffs. Starting with the left fielders to review the outfield that we have. I have questions. I have question marks around Brian Reynolds. We're seeing some declining. We know he's hit his potential 83 overall. He's going to be 30. Contract is forever till 2031. I gotta be honest with you, I don't know what to do with him. We're gonna see how he performs next year. But behind him is Wyatt Langford, who we could utilize in right field as well, or as DH. His first year, he played 63 games, batted 290. Everything's improving. Look at that contact against left, went up 10 this year. This guy's a stud. It just kind of makes you wonder if there's room for Edward Olivares on this roster. B potential, he's 28 years old. We got a few years of arbitration left with him. That's gonna be one of the first decisions we're really gonna to have to make next year. Do we offer arbitration? With players like Richie Palacios behind him in AAA who had a pretty solid season. The stats are gone because I simmed ahead. I'm recording, post-recording. 
But in the major leagues this year, he he did get a couple games, 26 games, 83 at bats, batted 205. Everything's improving except for contact against left, but he's a C potential, so his ceiling might be pretty low. In center field, we have Jack Zawinski. You can see the power did decline against right-handers, but it's still a 91. It's still ridiculous. We will see him battle for a position in spring training next year. It might be an area we target in the offseason. I'm not 100% sure yet. Michael A. Taylor. We do have a con or a option, a team option to pick up his contract next year. We're really going to have to debate that. He's 33 years old at this point. Didn't give us a ton but maybe he'll come back. Jose Ramos was really impressing me as well. He's a C potential, 23 years old. Can he get to the major league level and contribute? As we look at right field, there's really no one of interest. Rhodes, I didn't really play with very much. And the rest of these guys just aren't really up to par. Josh Palacios saw time in the big leagues this year. We have him down at double A to end the year. McCutcheon, we're, there's no way we can bring him back unless we get a really really good deal on for him but he played pretty much every day this year we're not going to guarantee him that next year if he does come back but that leaves a huge hole in right field on this team where we could put Langford but I would like to see him as the DH in the future as we look ahead at the 2025 depth chart with us making no moves. This is assuming we pick up the player option on Taylor. A lot of 70s, a lot of 70s around the board. The pitching staff is improving. One of the things of interest is when we hop to 2028, there's somebody missing. Eldridge doesn't make it according to the projections. It's, uh, it's really concerning, and Mayo only gets up to an 80, so some things to look at. Let's finish this season. Checking back in on the team, we beat the Royals 3-1. to one. Solomedo went six innings, seven hits, giving up one run, one earned run, and 12 strikeouts. That a boy. It looks like we got a home run from Kebrian Hayes and two RBIs from Langford. He went two for four. McCutcheon of two hits as well. Nice to see a win there. And then we rally off another win against Kansas City. This one saw Paul Skeens on the mound go five innings, give up four earned runs and only four strikeouts. But the bats did help out. Wyatt Langford gets a home run. Reynolds with an RBI. Langford with four RBIs. Quite a game. Then we come into a series against the Cardinals. We take one out of three games, moving us to 68 and 84 on the season. Six games ahead of the Brewers. Well, six and a half. Let's take a look at AAA here. We are still tied for first and six games out in double A. Now that we're done wrapping up, looking at the team, it's pretty clear that some of our weaknesses are right field as well as the bullpen. The big thing I'm interested in is in these last few games of the year, can the Indians make the playoffs? Let's help them out. And Traymar Johnson is up in the top of the seventh. We are down three nothing with a runner at second, one out as we jump into this scenario here. And there's a nice hit off the bat of Johnson. Is that going to get past him? It is. It's over the fence for a home run for Trey Mar Johnson. His 10th of the year, 366 feet, 104 exit velocity. It's a two to three ball game. We jump back into it in the top of the eighth. It's still three to two with Jeb up to bat. Nobody out. 1-0 count. Jeb with a line drive to center field. That will be one out in the eighth inning. That brings up Eldridge. He's one for three today. He's a tall fellow. Is he 6'7"? Got a good amount of these tall guys on the team now. We got Cruz. We got Eldridge. There was another one. It's just escaping me right now. Pitch delivered. Right down the middle. That should be a base hit. We're going to stretch that into two. Can't play it in left field. We're going to hold there, though. Get a runner in scoring position with one out here in the eighth inning. Trailing by a run. Important game. You know, I'm not familiar with Bins here. He must be one of the bench players on the AAA squad, but he moves Eldridge to third base. And that's what I wanted to spend this episode getting a little more familiar with the entire organization. When I started this season... I was really excited about getting into it, and I didn't spend a lot of time getting to know the non-top prospects as we're going to fly out there to end the eighth. We did not get a run across. We're going to finish playing this game. 
Looks like we have, wow, how do you say that name? Lodzinski. I'm wondering if the M is silence. Let's go ahead. Yeah, this bullpen is just weak. Got plenty of energy from Lozinski. That's how I'm guessing. I apologize if I am wrong there. Got a nice slurve, though. Ground ball to Johnson. Feels it cleanly to first. One away. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, we should have the top of the order coming up to bat in the ninth inning. As long as we can get out of this with just being trailing by one run still, as with another ground ball to Johnson. Nice combo there, Johnson and Eldridge. I feel like we're going to be seeing that in the future in the big leagues. We might need to get to know this young pitcher. I don't mind his stuff at all so far. 1-1 one, one count. Foul tip there. See if we can get a strike out here to end the inning. We do. Goes down looking. See if we can get a run or two across here in the ninth. Oh, the two hole is up here. Ramos to start. And we swing at the first pitch and just get two under it there. One away. Can feel it slipping away. This playoff opportunity. Must win on these last two games of the season. Zawinski against a righty. It's exactly what we want here. A one count. That should get into the gap and get Zawinski to at least second base. We'll hold him there. That, uh, that's how we do it. And that brings up Johnson, who has the only RBIs of this game for us. Foul ball on the strike there. Or on the fastball. 0-1 count. Down one run. One out in the ninth inning. Runner at second base. Trying to get something we can handle here. 0-2 count. Seen a fastball on the splitter. Only thing we haven't seen is the slider. High fastball there. Fouled it off. Fighting it. We're fighting it. Staying in this at bat. Good timing there. Just weak contact. That's outside for a ball. One and two count to Johnson. Love to see him get a base hit here. Oh, we look at strike three. Got to swing the bat there. Got to protect the plate. Shackelford is up here. He's 0 for 4 today. That just goes foul. That could have tied the game if it just stayed in play. That's a fly ball to center field. We're going to lose this one and go one game down going into the last game of the season. Oh, we have two games left. So let's look at the standings here. We're still tied with the Redbirds. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this next one with a custom scenario. There was not one, and we lose 7-2. to two. And looking at the standings, we are a game behind the Red Birds. They have clinched. We're, oh, we're a game and a half out. So they already won today. No reason to play this game. I don't know how the wild card works. You know what? Let's we'll go ahead and see if there's a scenario. I was going to do the whole game, but let's put this on a little bit here. We'll go to eighth inning. There is. We are down two to three with a runner at first base, and Jeb is up to bat in the seventh inning. Could be the difference between a wild card berth and being eliminated from playoff contention for our AAA squad here in Indianapolis, finishing the season on the road. And that's not how you start it. You don't swing at every pitch, but apparently I do. Runner at first brings up Celestino. He's 0 for 1 today. Must have a walk. And that's a pitch you don't swing at. 2-3 ball game in the seventh inning. Trying to fight for a wild card. We should have looked at the other standings to see if we even have a shot. Gotta learn how that works. I assume it's like old school major leagues where just one team in each division or each conference, each league makes the playoffs. We got a 2-2 count. Probably should have swung at that. I thought that was going to be way low. Fouled that off. Whew. Got to focus here. 2-2 count. Oh, 
That's a base hit. That's going to get past the shortstop. Runners on first and second. Up to bat is DeLay. He's two for two today. Two runners on, two outs. Down by a run. Top of the seventh inning. If that gets down, that'll score a run. It does. It is a tie ball game. Runners at the corners. Palacios is up as they bring in a left-handed reliever to face him. Strike one on the inside corner. Get a hold of one there, but I think the right fielder is going to be able to play it. He is not. That could score another run. We're going to send him. And he is safe. Five to three Indians. Nice base hit there. Just over the right fielder's reach. Two-run score. Brings up Johnson with a runner at second. Two-run lead here in the seventh inning. Way ahead of the slider. 0-1 count to Johnson. That's another shot that might get in the gap, but I think the left fielder is going to be able to play that. That'll end the top of the seven. Got to be honest, I was kind of multitasking while recording this, and my Diamondbacks just beat the Cardinals to move to seven and eight for the year. A little struggle for the D-backs so far. They're a little injured, though. It's early. Jab gets this fly ball, but I thought Mayo was going to try to steal it there. One down in the bottom of the seventh. One, two count. Line drive to Palacios. That'll take us to the ninth inning with a two-run lead. Jose Ramos is 0 for 1 today, leading off the ninth inning. And that's a base hit on the first pitch. Mitch Jab up to bat here. He's 0 for 3. Runner at first, no outs. That's low. 1-1 one, one count. All cold spots, lefty versus lefty matchup here. Okay, there's the corner, but he called it a ball that time. So he's not consistent. Maybe it's the outside corner that he's giving these pitchers. And we swing at a, would have been, oh, I guess that was in the zone, 2-2 two -two count. But we were late on a 90 mile an hour fastball. Why? And then we're very early on it, but that's going to get down and should get the runner to third. Runners on the corners with nobody out. Celestino comes up. He's one for two today. And that's going to give us another run. Moves Zawinski to third. Runners on the corners again with nobody out. Six to three Indians. Delay. Three for three today. Deep fly ball to left field. Tag the runner. 7-3. Palacios is up to bat with one out and a runner on first. Swings at a slider outside. Base hit to left field. Runners at first and second. That brings up Johnson. They bring in a reliever, a right-hander to face the lefty. He's 0 for 4 today. That's a gonna oh, that's not almost went home. Almost went home. Bases loaded. Does that bring up Mayo? Is Mayo playing? Can't remember. It is Mayo. He's 0 for 4. Oh, shouldn't have swung at that, but it gets down. It'll score a run. Eight to three, breaking out finally. Eldridge with the bases loaded and one out. Not sure if there, it's possible for this team to get that wild card, but they sure are fighting for it. And that's a fly ball to center field, 65 speed. We're going for it. We were relying on the throw being off line, and it was just a hair. It is nine to three, Indians. Sawinski's up with runners at first and second, and two outs in the top of the ninth. Lots of insurance runs here. Way to fight for your pitching staff. That one is going to end the ninth inning, though, or the top of the ninth. 
as we head to the bottom to try to close this out. And you know what? Let's just see what we have with Stratton. Three and two this year with 57 appearances. 44 out of 48 with the saves. Seems like pretty good numbers in AAA for me for a closer. Strike one on the cutter. Just catches the corner there. Try the fastball on the inside corner. Strikes. Swings through it. 0-2 counts. We use the slider, but he fouls it off. Try the slider again. Yeah, we should have trusted the catcher there and threw it out of the plate, but he doesn't swing anyways. One away in the bottom of the ninth. Blankenhorn up to bat. Can Palacios get there? I don't think so. We're going to try, but he can't. One and one. Mayo tries to jump for it. He is not able to. That's a base hit. One runner on, one out in the bottom of the ninth. As the Indians try to close this season off with a win. And we'll find out afterwards if that means we make the playoffs. It didn't say we were eliminated, so I'm thinking there is a shot at that wild card. 0-2 pitch. Fouled off. Let's try the slider here. See if we can get him to ground into a double play. He went, though. Two outs. Ooh, he caught the corner there, but the ump disagrees. Let's have Angel Hernandez back there. One and one. Strike two. Swings at the cutter. Try to get the cutter on the outside corner here. Eldridge dives. Cannot get it. That is a base hit. Two runners on. Two away in the bottom of the ninth. Nunez up to bat here. He's their leadoff batter. He's one for four today. Stratton's pitch count up to 18 pitches now. We get away with a high fastball there. Called a strike by the umpire. I don't know why he didn't call that one a strike. 20th pitch. Of, okay. Stay in the park. Stay in the park. Good thing we got all those runs. Six to nine. Three run shot by Nunez. First pitch popped out. Palacios running, running, running. He gets there. Indians win. Nine to six. Now I guess we hit advance. Unfortunately, we did not make the playoffs going 80 and 70, and we know that the curve did not. But the minor league playoffs does begin. And it doesn't let us see it, though. That's unfortunate. So let's see if we can learn a little bit here. I don't see anybody with the W for wild card. Maybe there isn't. Yeah, I don't know. If anybody knows, let me know. And with a handful of games left in the year, we're going to sim away, get to the last game of the season and play that one out. We have Ovedo versus Cortez. We are 70 and 91. All of a sudden, only a game ahead of the Brewers who get hot to end the year. They're on a, they've won seven out of their last 10, four game winning streak. We gotta win, we gotta win. Who are they playing? Let's take a look. They're playing the Mets. We'll see what we can do. And I tried to do a custom scenario and it didn't let me. That's disappointing. I apologize, everyone. I, I, don't, I don't understand why I have it set to low, but it did not let us do it. That's, that was, that was silly of me. Ovedo pitched pretty well for only seven hits, but he did give up four runs. Let's see how they got those, if we could figure that out. In the fifth and sixth inning, looks like there was a home run by Rizzo. But we end the season 70 and 92 as we look forward to the rest of the year. Let's let's check a look at these awards. Uh, look at that. Rookie of the year was Paul Skeens. So he did keep, get it ahead of Langford. There was a moment where Langford did jump ahead of him. If we look at the American League, Carter did not end up getting it. Colt Keith ends up having a good, great rookie year, batting 262, 24 home runs, and 82 RBIs for the Tigers. Played most of the year. They did sign him to a long-term contract, it looks like. Very wise of them to lock him in. Anything else noteworthy from our team, I will let you know. Brian Hayes misses out on the Golden Glove, gets beat by Ryan McMahon. Wow. 
Must have had an error to leading at the end of the year that caused that. That's too bad. And really the only person of no of, of mention was, was there. So let's go ahead and sim through this and see how the playoffs go. In the American League, we have the Texas Rangers as the one seed, the Orioles as the two seed, the Twins as the three seed, then we go with the Astros, the Yankees, and the Blue Jays. Over in the National League, Atlanta ends up getting the one seed and the Dodgers. They will both get buys. Go ahead and advance day by day and see how this unfolds. Arizona's up 1-0. Houston's up 1-0. Houston series is tied one apiece with the Yankees. The Phillies have tied up the series with the Diamondbacks. The Cubs are up 1-0 against the Reds, and the Twins are up 1-0 against the Blue Jays. Then we see Minnesota advance Houston advance, Arizona advance, and the Reds tie the series against the Cubs. The Reds end up winning that series two games to one. So in the second round of the playoffs, we have the Astros facing off against the Rangers, the Twins facing off against the Orioles, the Diamondbacks facing off against the Braves, and the Reds facing off against the Dodgers. Atlanta's up one game on the Diamondbacks. The Dodgers are up one game on the Reds. Both of those teams win again. The Braves are up 2-0 against the Diamondbacks now. The Dodgers are 2-0 against the Reds. Houston wins the first game against the Rangers, and Baltimore wins the first game against the Twins. The National League having a day off today. The Rangers win game two. The Orioles win game two. This time, the American League has the day off. The Diamondbacks get a win. The Reds get a win. The Rangers go up 2-1. The Orioles go up 2-1. The Dodgers end up winning the series 3-1, and the Diamondbacks are eliminated by the Braves 3-1. We see the Rangers and the Orioles advance. So in the ALCS, we have the Rangers facing off against the Orioles. In the NLCS, we have the Braves facing off against the Dodgers. The Braves end up taking Game 1 in the National League. The Dodgers take Game 2. The Rangers take Game 1 in the American League, as well as Game 2. So we're sitting at 2-0. Rangers and one game apiece in the National League. A couple more days simmed here, and the Rangers are up 2 1 against the Orioles, and the series is tied in the National League, two apiece. Dodgers win game five. Rangers get, win game four. Rangers do advance, but the Braves fight off the Dodgers to live another day. Three games each now. Can the Braves prevent the Dodgers from making the World Series? They do. The Braves come back down three games to one to move to the World Series. The Rangers, defending their World Series championship from last season, are in the World Series again, this time against the Braves. Game one of the World Series, and can, let's, let's see if we can take a look at these box scores. So we have the Braves here, and it looks like the Braves ended up winning eight to five. DeGrom was on the mound, but gave up six runs in the second inning and was relieved in that game where Strider went six and one third innings, giving up five runs himself, but the eight runs by the Braves was enough. Looks like the Braves take game two as well, four to one. Game three, the Braves are up three games to nothing. The Rangers have to pull off a miracle here and win four straight as Sale ends up winning game three, going six and one third, giving up one run on six hits to Gray, go, giving up four runs in five and one third. We advance a day and the Braves with the sweep over the Rangers are the 2024 World Series champions in our franchise. Elder goes seven innings, giving up one run on five hits. They win six to two. They won 113 games. My goodness, that is the team to beat, team to worry about in our franchise. The last thing I really want to do here is kind of look at, oh, and the stats are gone. That's right. We'll go through it this way. Cruz ended up batting 259 for the year with 21 home runs and 45 RBIs in 95 games. Didn't get to see a full year from him. McCutcheon's contract is up. We'll see what we do with him in the offseason, if he's going to retire or if we want to sign him again. Being that he's going to be 38 next season, everything's declining a lot. We're probably going to lean away from that. Did have a good season for us. Very serviceable player. Reynolds almost got back up to 300. He finished the year 259, 24 home runs, 82 RBIs. Solid player. Langford in his rookie campaign goes 290 in 63 games with eight home runs and 33 RBIs. Cabrian Hayes, 242. Not super excited about that. Career high in home runs and RBIs. And, I, you know, he lowered his strikeouts, but 
more games, so not super great. Taylor 220 was a good experiment. I don't know if we'll pick up the player option on him next year. Andy Rodriguez 255. And we get to Davis here, who batted 248 for us with 12 home runs and 50 RBIs. Triolo came back in, finished the year 289 with three home runs, 15 RBIs in 45 games. We didn't get to see a lot of Triolo this year. Jump into the bench players. Pagrero batting 253 for the year. Gonzalez, Gonzalez is just struggling. How many at-bats did he have? 115 at-bats, batting 174. Not too great. Oliver, Oliveris, we need to get him in the game somehow. He only played him 40 times, batting 274. Might be someone to think about next year. Belts was a little experiment just to have some backup at first base. He played 18 games, batting 190. And we got Zawinski, for whatever reason, got pulled up to the big leagues when the season ended. I don't understand how that happened. Uh, but he... <laughs> So we can't see his minor league stats. And pitching wise, we can look at Keller here, who ended up with 13 wins, 11 losses, giving up 65 runs all season, 2.7 ERA. He had a great year. He had a great year. His war was 4.2, career year, his best season yet when it comes to ERA. Maybe not wins. He had 13 wins last year as well. Solid, solid pitcher. Avedo was a nice surprise to me. He went 12 and 7, 3.17 ERA. He also had a career year. Let's hope that's a trend for them moving forward. Solometto ended up with a 5.4 ERA in six starts, but he gave up eight home runs, 2.27. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. His rating's a 60 or a 50 at home runs. That's why. Skeens in his rookie campaign won the rookie of the year. With a 4.35 ERA, he went 9-8 and eight in 26 starts. He had nine quality starts. I hope to see... I'm moving way too fast. I apologize. I hope to see that improve. 9.41 Ks per nine is pretty solid. Everything should get better every year for him. Then we get Jared Jones, who ended up starting 12 games and got no wins. He went 0-9. 59 innings pitched. Gave up 13 home runs in 12 starts with a 6.1 ERA. Got the whip under two. Just got to see everything across the board improve for him. Olderman, I do want to take a look at here. 4.2, 4.42 ERA. We'll take a look at him and keep him around for a while. But this bullpen's really got to improve, and that's going to be a big focus of our offseason. It's going to be an exciting episode. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Socks Way Up. Next episode, we get into our first offseason with the Pirates.